Isaiah 26, 3 through 4. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Even the best manuals cannot prepare moms for the ongoing demand and load along this journey. Many moms feel helpless, clueless, and weary, and if that's not enough, they feel guilt and shame for feeling this way. The original blog post for this voiceover is entitled, Bible Verses for Struggling Moms, but I'm just not feeling that title for this video. Instead, I went with, looking to the Bible for a victory in mothering. I am tired of the negativity in this world, in, the, in my community, and on my commu computer screen. So I want to offer something this week where our script is flipped. Yes, there is struggle. The Word of God promises that there will be, and that there will be struggle along the way. But the Bible also talks about victory, joy, and the abundant life. Welcome to Healing Home where we chat about faith, homemaking, motherhood, a splash of homesteading and homeschooling, and anything else that comes up along the way. Today I'm really excited about this video because we get to chat about looking to the Bible during the struggle, but find joy in motherhood and homemaking, and here's the key, finding victory in Christ. While we chat, I'll be cleaning up my home from our son's second birthday party. I've went back and forth over the years on birthday parties, especially as we now have four children, and let's face it, any type of party isn't cheap. We give our older two sons a choice between a party or an experience, and most of the time they've chosen an experience. Half of West's birthdays have been experiences like going to a climbing wall, or my favorite was when he wanted to sw swim with stingrays, and we were able to do that at the sea, uh, sea quest in our area. Anyways, it's been a full year since we've had a birthday party here because the last one we had was actually the same son's first birthday party. It was a very enjoyable day this weekend filled with celebration of our son's last two years. As we chat, we'll also be doing normal household chores like gathering chicken eggs, feeding the animals, doing laundry, cooking meals, and I'll also be preparing some scripture cards for my family to work on memorizing. These scripture were chosen because they're short verses, which are easy for kids to memorize. I think they turned out pretty cute, and they will be going in our car to hopefully review each time we drive somewhere. I'll put the link for the printable PDF in the description and a card above. The Word of God is full of comfort and encouragement for us, and we can find victory and thrive as we abide in Christ in our motherhood and homemaking. Welcome to Healing Home. I hope you are encouraged and inspired by your time here. We all go through seasons in our lives when life seems to seems like an, a daily uphill struggle. The Bible has plenty to say about this. There's an element of vulnerability to admit if we're in a season of hard days, but why stay there? Yes, we're going to discuss some Bible verses that will encourage us when we find ourselves in a mental um, mentality of struggle, but we need to find a victory in Christ. Dare I say that when we abide in Christ, we will find abundance in our lives. I want to remind people that most of my videos are not theological Bible studies. Actually, all of them are not. We are not exegeting Bible passages, but rather topically exploring. This means that Bible verses that we chat about should be looked at further to understand what the writers are saying and communicating. I pray that I never take a verse out of context and apply it wrong, but I ask for grace if that ever does happen. So just know that this is a topical exploration and not a theological deep dive. As we look to victory and abundance in our homemaking and mothering, we're going to explore four passages, and the first one being John 10.10. 10. My cup overflows with his abundance and blessing. It overflows when the blessings in my life are more than my cup can hold. Does that sound too good to be true? I have news for you. Your cup already overflows too. If you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ, then your cup is overflowing and spilling out with abundance. In Christ, we have overflowing joy, 
overflowing love and overflowing abundance and more. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10 The only way we can live a life of abundance is through Christ. Christ's death on the cross is a gift that precedes the gift of abundance because our abundance can only be found in Christ. See Romans 5.17 It can be easy to focus on the big blessings of life when God heals us from sicknesses, gives us success in our career, or answers big prayers about finances. Those all can be obvious blessings, and we should be thankful for those. But what about those everyday blessings? Did you wake up in the morning? He gave you life today. Did you have breakfast? He gave you food today. Here's an action step. Make a list of daily blessings that are not always obvious. Thank God for his abundance in your life. Matthew 6.30 But if God so clothes the grasses of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith! A simple and mundane task like laundry can be can be an ex- spiritual experience of joy. When we flip our mindset and thank God for the clothes he has provided, the home we get to fold laundry in, and the children we get to serve by these tasks. Our next verse comes from Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. This verse is for the mom who feels weary and as if her daily work is mundane and yielding no fruit. This verse is like a gentle nudge from our Heavenly Father. If you're feeling overwhelmed and like you're running on empty, remember that God sees your good work. I suspect that the hidden moments of motherhood, when we are faithful to our calling but no one sees them, will be the moments that add up to the longed-for phrase, well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew 25, 23. Of course, as a gardener and homesteader, my brain naturally goes to growing our own food when I read this verse. Learning how to homestead is a slow process. Learning how to grow food is a slow process. Just when I seem to get one type of food figured out, something comes up and I have to relearn the whole process again. I did that earlier this year with zucchini and squash, which I have exactly zero zero of even after planting three different occasions. My soil just wouldn't support the plant and every single time it died. Meanwhile, our onions and potatoes were thriving in the same garden and soil. Same thing with our motherhood parenting, marriage, homemaking. It seems like just when we start to figure out a child, they go and advance to the next level of child development and the whole learning process starts again. Part of me loves this because it keeps the adventure going and part of me feels so discouraged that I'm constantly starting over again. In both of these situations, Galatians 6, 9 reminds me that doing good is worth the effort. Now, I'm well aware that the Galatians 6 chapter is talking specifically about doing good to all people, not necessarily motherhood, marriage, gardening, and parenting, and all that stuff. So take this whole verse with a grain of salt and understanding. As you're faithful in your mothering and homemaking and marriage, you will reap rewards, even if that reward is simply the victory of a sanctified life of a believer. Our next verse is Philippians 2, 14 through 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Let's face it, being a mom can sometimes feel like you're stuck in a never-ending cycle of challenges and goodness. If you are already tired of the situations that 2024 have brought, this verse could be a kick in the gut for some. One of my friends online, her name is Leanne from Kingdom Bloggers, recently made a TikTok about how in Galatians 6-7 it says that God cannot be mocked. 
and man will reap what he sows. She went on to remind us that God sees everything and his justice will come. She explained it so much better than me, but what I found so refreshing is that this video was unintentionally released after a worldwide situation where Christians felt like our faith was being mocked in a very gruesome way. I shut down my screens that weekend because I couldn't stomach it all. The TikTok went viral for her and she goes on to say that instead of getting angry about every little thing that the world is throwing at us, we should instead live a life that honors God and trusts that he will take and trusts that he will take care of the rest. Her call was to simplicity and trust instead of vengeance, when God very clearly has told us that vengeance is his. Romans 12:19. As Philippians 2 reminds us, we live in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation and my heart breaks for my children who have to navigate a world that is so twisted. But this verse in Philippians reminds us to ma maintain a heart of gratitude and joy, reflecting the love of God in our everyday life. When times are tough, you're shining a light in the dark. And here's the thing, your home can be a light in a dark place. I've received kickback for this over the years, but I remain firm in my belief that our homes can be a healing place. I want my children to find my home a refuge from a world that shoves and pushes and pulls them. I want my husband to be able to walk into our home after a frustrating day at work and feel the weight of his responsibilities melt away as the environment that I create as a homemaker washes over him. Homemakers, you have a great privilege to add pockets of peace to your home. And honestly, your pockets of peace may look very different than mine. We have the ability to bring healing into our homes with our words, our action, actions, and our touches of femininity. Maybe it's as simple as a candle burning or the smell of breaking bread. These are all pockets of peace that can bring a tangible, peaceful environment to your home and family. We can shine the light of Jesus with our words as well. I know sometimes as moms, we can feel like our mission field is very small, but if we have children, they are your greatest mission field I believe you will ever have. Before we move on, I'm going to share the recipe of the week, which was and is my homemade burritos. It was a busy week around here and I needed something quick and easy for dinner one night. I often use leftovers for this healthy burrito recipe, so you'll see footage that the, where the ingredients vary slightly from the original recipe. Specifically, I add, added avocados this time, which was very delicious. I've had a few people scoff at the title healthy burritos and I sort of give it, get it. I wish I could say that I'm using homemade wraps, but for the time being, I've given up on making a homemade wrap. Instead, I'm using a low carb wrap that has eh, okay ingredients. This would be a trim healthy E or crossover recipe if you follow that eating plan. We live in a society that has very food backwards mentality in my opinion. I recently saw one, someone ridiculed mercilessly because she was feeding her kids sourdough pancakes with homegrown bacon, veggies from her garden, and raw milk. People freaked out that she considered it healthy. That meal that she served her kids was so much more nutrient dense than a bowl of cereal, which many people consider a healthy breakfast for kids. I sort of look at these burritos the same way. Do they contain perfect ingredients? No, but goodness, they're more nutrient dense than throwing some chicken nuggets on a tray for an easy dinner. You can also freeze these, wrap tightly in plastic wrap, label and place them in the freezer in an airtight container. When you want to cook them, unwrap the plastic and bake in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 minutes. You can also microwave them if you're comfortable with microwaves. I could probably do an entire video just on why we're uncomfortable with microwaves, but we don't currently have one. There's a lot of reasons, but one of the most convincing is that my husband has a traumatic brain injury and he had a bone flap years ago. When a microwave has a crack in it, which a lot of them do, he can literally feel vibrations, a sort of a uh, suspected it's radiation, in his skull. He can feel it. He can tell when we go to places that have micro microwaves if they have cracks or not, and that alone was enough for me to check the microwave. 
We've been making these for years with varying versions and ingredients depending on the season and time of the year. They're super fun to make during my garden harvest season because I can add fresh veggies like spinach, peppers, tomatoes, and whatever else is coming in from the garden. We've also made these with our homegrown pork, which is also excellent. You can find the whole one, the whole list of ingredients and instructions at healinghomerecipes.co. Ephesians 4.2 With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with another in love. Ephesians 4.2 This verse is for the mom who needs a reminder of how to keep her cool and handle her children in those challenging moments. I recently had a mothering moment with my older two kids that I will not soon forget. While they were off on a very looked forward to camping trip, I descended upon their shared bedroom and found that they had been stashing candy, yogurt, cheese sticks, and more under their bunk bed. Our kids are most definitely not allowed to have food in their rooms, so it was quite a blood pressure rising experience for me as I realized that they had taken advantage of some situations. There were some big consequences because their room had been an ongoing struggle for some time. I admit that my first reaction was not one of gentleness, patience, and bearing in love. They're responsible for cleaning their room every day and I hold them to that. I've debated and struggled about whether it's development, developmentally appropriate and I've had to adjust my expectations accordingly. I clean whatever they miss every week and I thought the room was in, pretty good, in a pretty good state. But when I went into their room, it was during a very warm week and something just didn't smell right. You know what I mean, mamas? What I found was so nasty, I shouldn't probably describe it on YouTube. We've completely restructured their room now because they admittedly, um, they admitted some pretty nasty conniving that they had done and um, consistent disobedience with their choices. Anyways, it was a good thing that they were off on a trip because I was pretty upset. Thank God for husbands who know how to calm their lady down because Danny talked me down from my uproar and we came up with a plan to maintain their room better. Sometimes we need a team to help us maintain our humility, gentleness, and patience like described in Ephesians 2. We need people in our lives. We're not an island to ourselves. We need to call out to the Holy Spirit and to those brothers and sisters in Christ who can help us when situations, even something as simple as a bedroom, brings us to a point, a point of distress. Whether you're dealing with a challenging day or navigating tough times with your children, humility and gentleness are a key to keeping the peace of God in your home. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. While you take time to meditate on these Bible verses for victory amidst the struggle, remember that motherhood and homemaking is a journey. The cliche saying, the days are long but the years are short, are very true. One day, the room that never seemed to stay clean will be empty and our kids will be the next generation of adults who are governing the world and living their lives. As you parent, train your eyes to see them for their future selves. Let this be a guide in how you speak to them, train them, mold them, love them, and live out your own life in front of them. No matter how out of control your situation may be, consider the high calling that has been placed on you as mother. He is near to the struggling mom and homemaker who is exhausted and brokenhearted and can't see her way. Remember, each step of the way is covered by God's love and grace. You're doing a good job on your motherhood and homemaking journey. And even on the toughest days, God is right there with you. Keep trusting Him, lean on His promises, and know that His love will see you through. My dear sister, He cares for you. Does your cup overflow with abundance? 
It should always be overflowing if God is reigning in your life. My cup runneth over with blessings. It runs over firstly because Christ saved me. Measly old me. Me that messes up so much. If salvation is all that Christ offered, that would be enough. But Jesus promised an abundant life, one filled with blessings. When we live in submission, we will find a lifetime supply of abundance.